uh, next talk is by Pavle Subotic. He's, he's going to talk about uh, joint work with Bernard Schultz. There, as you most of you probably know, they're working on Souffle, the uh, data log engine that's doing for doing static analysis at industrial scales. So, um, Pavle, if you're uh, ready, please go ahead. Okay. Um, ooh. Trying to share and. It's telling me, oh my God, I have to go to system preferences. I'm on a Mac. I apologize. Um, I have to give Zoom permission. One second. Yeah, I, I had the same thing. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> oh, no. I have to quit and reopen. Uh, so I'll quickly have to rejoin. I apologize. <laughs> Okay, so just while, while I was giving the talk, I realized that I did a typo. I did a last minute change in the notebook and I had a typo. So I, if you wish. I was, yeah, yeah. By the way, Paul Terra, if you want to try to share in the meantime before uh, Pavle joins back, uh, maybe we save some time. Okay, yeah, so you have no problem. Okay, you can stop sharing. Okay. Perfect. Uh -huh. And he has already tried. So, yeah. and the funny thing is, I had been using Zoom before, but possibly after some system update, you need to maybe some there's a, like a yeah software update. There. Yeah, it seems. Can everyone hear me? By the way, yes. 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 Oh, okay. <laughs> Things are looking better now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Perfect. We can see your screen. Oh, good. <laughs> okay. All right. The complete disaster. Let me uh, just share my um, do the slideshow stuff. Uh, okay, can everyone see the slideshow and the slides? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. We're in business. Thank you, everyone, and sorry about that. Um, yes, as mentioned, this is joint work with uh, Bernard Schultz and um, a whole bunch of other uh, PhD students and interns that um, I couldn't possibly fit on the slides, but um, they're all on the papers. So, uh, as mentioned, I'll talk about uh, Souffle, and um, it's really a story of how we took something, a really cool idea that um, people already kind of uh, thought about and published and how we brought this cool idea from academia to be something that can work um, at an industrial uh, scale. Uh, so some of you probably know all this, some of you don't. So I kind of have to uh, explain the link between program analysis and uh, data log, which isn't always apparent. So um, the idea is that uh, we can treat uh, a program as data, right? And often, as you know, uh, in compilers and, and static analyzers, we have graphs. Um, and that already kind of tells you uh, why data log is good. And um, the data log program uh, it adds the rules of um, the program analysis. Okay, so here we have um, we detect a, one rule detects unsafe nodes, and then we say, okay, if a, a node is in the set vulnerable and uh, it's unsafe, then we can say it's a violation. So this is a very simple idea, but you get the idea that um, using these um, horn clauses, we can satisfy these. Con we can have constraints, and and then the model is kind of the answer. To the static analysis. Um, so another way of looking at this is that data log is, is a DSL, right? And so I took these from like a slide, I think some slides from Denmark on, on static analysis in general. It really describes it well. So um, you have a CFG, you have constraints, you have a fixed point solver, and you have a solution. Well, this is exactly what you do in, in data log, we have this uh, facts coming in, which is kind of the input program, then the constraints are rules, and then the engine is the actual fixed point solver, and we get a solution. So it's really no different to um, how people use uh, SAT solvers, right? If you have some problem that requires a backtracking, um, you can write it in C++ or Java, or you can actually declaratively encode it using um, some SMT2 or something, and then let the um, uh, the, the SAT engine be um, the backtracking solver. Well, in this sense, um, 
the bottom up data log solver is the fixed point engine. It's the kind of work list algorithm in a static analysis or data flow analysis. <clears throat> Another kind of view of this is that um, more abstract interpretation point of view is um, that there's this kind of uh, link. What we're computing is actually um, the abstract state um, going from uh, the EDB going to the IDB. So that's another way. And then our fixed point solver, our engine, uh, with accordance to the rules, which are like the abstract semantics, uh, are leading us to this least fixed point, which is um, this sort of minimal model property of data log um, on a power set lattice, of course. Uh, and so practically what you need to do is you take a program, you need uh, an extra bit of code, which does the extraction. So it converts uh, this syntax or ASC or whatever um, into some input relations. And then um, you can just uh, write the rules and get the result. Mm -hmm. um, and this is kind of stuff that's, uh, that is nothing new. Um, and uh, many people, um, Ullman, Angler reps, all um, had this in, in the literature. Um, so the question is why hasn't, wasn't data log kind of used for um, these commercial grade analyzers? Um, and uh, in 2014 in Oracle labs, we kind of, um, we kind of <laughs> tried to see what happens. And we quickly found that um, the existing implementations um, really weren't made for um, the static analysis use case. And, uh, there's two dimensions to that. There's the the uh, language aspect. So, I mean, the language of vanilla data log is kind of a, it's a nice idea, but you need some additions there. And the solvers really weren't built for that. So um, this is like an early uh, example we took. We used mu Z and we wrote the equivalent in C++ and there was like a huge difference. And the early... Uh, People that use data log, so this is a, a quote from Maya Nike in 2010. It's it, the idea is like, okay, data log is great for prototyping, but then we implement it in a low level language. So we wanted to sort of um, make an engine so you you could just implement it straight away. Uh, so yeah, like I said, this is eight years of research. Um, it's a really hard task <laughs> to describe eight years in 10 minutes, but I'm doing, <laughs> I'm going to do my best. So excuse if I rush some uh, slides, um, but yeah, there's two dimensions to this, which I'll uh, discuss. Um, so uh, we, we noticed that, you know, building these sort of toy uh, analysis is fine, but when um, you're gonna uh, define something like a uh, dupe, uh, like a whole library of static analysis, um, you need a lot more, you need composition, you need, um, uh, even data structures. Um, and so we, we need type systems to make sure you, you didn't mess up um, and you need tooling. So um, the first thing uh, we did, we, we extended um, um, uh, so, uh, data log to have types and, and what we call data, the first sort of inklings of data structures, which were records. Um, and then we thought about components and then we, we added like arithmetic. So um, it was no longer, um, uh, uh, decidable, it jumped uh, to, to uh, a Turing complete language, um, aggregates, user defined functions, and a whole other stuff that I won't mention. But he's kind of like a feel for it. So um, you have functors, so you can actually, um, you know, do loops and things like that and not terminate if you want. Um, records, you could like define like um, lists, you can define trees. Um, recently, um, there's like algebraic data types added. Um, which is, um, there's some interesting use cases for like term rewriting and things like that. And the most recent thing we've added is uh, subsumption. So you can have um, arbitrary lattices if you define this sort of uh, partial ordering here. So you can implement like intervals and you won't have this like redundant um, data lying around that you need to kind of filter out. Um, it kind of takes care of that. Um, and so the next uh, thing I'll talk about is the actual engine. So one, I guess the most important thing in this use case is um, that um, the, it's not like a dynamic query, right? You you write your, your rules and they're kind of static. So you can do a lot of um, specialization 
And you can actually generate the, the uh, static analyzer. And um, since you know a lot of things in time, there's really cool optimization. So this was the original kind of way Soufflé worked. We had an interpreter, but recently um, a much faster interpreter has been developed because um, use cases that um, where you didn't know the rules ahead of time uh, started popping up. Um, um, two minutes, please. Yep, no worries. <laughs> so, so, okay, the main thing, uh, I think the big performance uh, gain here is that um, we, we index or we materialize uh, everything, all relations, and they have several indexes. And then we have uh, a smart uh, combinatorial method. So this is in a VLDB paper, if you want to read more, where we actually find the optimum amount of indexes that we need to synthesize um, so it can cover all the queries. So this uh, improves, uh, uh, it has about two times speed up and on some benchmarks, it has like six times memory uh, improvements. Um, and we also worked a lot on da different data structures and we have a general uh, framework for adding your own because we realized that for the incoming data that uh, you can't have a single data structure. The B tree does a good job, but there's always uh, room for specialized data structures. Um, and we we got performance that was um, equivalent to, I, th I think it was a uh, Uppsala paper um, for a points to analysis. We got even faster than that. Um, and the last thing we did uh, and we've recently done is a lot of tooling. So we have a profile up, but that's something uh, interesting, but the most interesting stuff is the provenance. So where we add proof annotations because, and, and we allow um, uh, the, the developer uh, to actually figure out like where their analysis could be wrong. And uh, this really all came about through actually industrial use cases. So at Amazon, we were using this and um, we were finding it really hard to figure out, uh, debug our uh, static analyses. And recently um, we've actually looked at uh, also describing to the user um, where an error may occur in the EDB and rolling it back. Uh, for our incremental uh, valuation setup. Uh, and I'll end by uh, just mentioning some use cases. So there's obviously a program analysis use case. Uh, there's a great library uh, by um, a, a great team in, in Greece, everyone probably knows, uh, Dupe. Um, and I've, I've, I've done program analysis at Amazon um, using Souffle, and we know there's a whole bunch of other people using it. Um, it's been used at AWS by myself uh, for uh, a network analysis. Um, there's some cool tools uh, for smart contract analysis. It's been used for compile optimizations and so on. Um, and I'll conclude, I think I'm at about 10 minutes. Um, so yeah, so what, what really we did is that we realized that um, there's a good idea and um, to actually make this uh, a commercial grade, um, you need uh, language extensions uh, and you need uh, different evaluation strategies. Um, and th there's been enormous strides in this area and not just by Souffle, by other engines as well and other people looking into this. I think program analysis has really been pushing data log a lot because um, it's just been this uh, great use case for it. But there's still a lot of remaining challenges uh, in terms of expressivity to be able to express nicely different analyses, uh, performance. There's always uh, uh, performance um, improvements and auto optimizations that can be done. I think, and the main thing uh, that we've been looking at is debuggability. So um, when people actually use this, that they can actually um, be able to figure out where um, their analysis is going wrong or if, if where the program is actually causing an error and so on. Uh, this is the web page. Um, and feel free to ask any offline questions. I know this was a <laughs> super short uh, presentation, but uh, you can ask on GitHub or feel free. I don't mind if people personally email questions. I'm always happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Carl.